everybody, this is Icon Function. I'm so I'm here today to give a brief overview to how I code my breadboards and how what you can do with breadboards and from the depths. Now, please note that this is not going to be a comprehensive tutorial. I'm aware Omis Fiotal has already done a very excellent set of um, those and I'm, I will probably be linking those in the description. What I'm hoping to do today is to look at the more non-obvious things you can do with a breadboard the the more um in particular i will be talking about the output function and what you could do with it so let me show you an example so the first thing i will demonstrate is um so this is one of my fighters now if you'll notice at the start it pulled a, a loop or a half turn and that is completely achieved with the output function. This complicated behavior is just the result of a very, very complicated breadboard, so, and a lot of it is just if functions. But I do hope it gives an idea to... Right, so I'll start with a template, and this is the fighter I just showed. So if I can just find its breadboard... Yep, there we go. And so this is complicated, this is a horrible mess, but if I can just find what I'm looking for. Yep, there we go. So this little bit of code, this little bit of code completely determines the flip. And I will explain in a bit more detail how, well, the logic behind it. So let's explain the logic a bit more. So what I have here is if I have condition A, which is fulfilled, so A equals 1, then I will hold a uh, output for 0 0.3 seconds, which you can see, well, that's a 0 0.3 there, so you, that's where it comes from. But let's, let's see in a bit more detail how this works. So if I can just find a printer. So you'll see that this printer is counting down. So what happens is, if I have my condition A fulfilled, then this output 2 will be reset to 0 0.3. After that, it will start counting down from 0 0.3. So that means, you know, it's a timer that's set for 0 0.3 seconds that starts when my condition is true. This first bit will output uh, a signal if the second, if output 2 is greater than 0, which means that as long as it's within that 0 0.3 second timer, my first output will um, produce whatever, sig whatever signal I want, which is to tell the aircraft to pitch up. I was going to give an, another, well, I was going to give another example, but let me actually start with showing what an output function actually does, which is what I should have started with. So let's say output one, and Let's connect it to a constant and let's see what comes out. So output one, it tells us zero. Essentially, output one will tell us what is the first output at the previous frame. Let's see, so if now I say output two and I set the second output to be A, we see that, I can just get it in we see that now both outputs now output one. So the second, the first output, which is up, will, will give the second output at the previous frame, which, but that is a constant, which is one. And if you are careful, you may notice that there is a frame difference, you see. So that's a, that's a slight frame difference between the two. What happens is that both are actually updated at the same so both outputs are updated at the same time, in the same frame, essentially. And this, this, this doesn't seem like much, but it's actually where most of our um, stuff comes in. Right, sorry about that. I had, a, <laughs> I had a call. So let's now take a look at how we take derivatives in the breadboard using the output function. So let's say I want to take the derivative of the target um, target bearing. So what I'll do is I'll connect this in. And 
I am going to say a no. So a minus output two over b. Sorry. Correct my mistakes for a bit. Over b and a. So what this does is if I set a printer to go into output 2 and I set b to be a data timer what happens is that at every frame we will update what is coming into output 1 which is a output 2 will um, print the current value of the target's bearing, that's fine. But what happens with our output2 function is that it will take the previous frame value of the target's bearing. So we can see what we, what we have here is the difference between our current target bearing and the previous target bearing divided by the time between the two. And that's exactly the, the value, like what the, def, what the derivative is. So let me just... Now, this will give us the targets like the, the the angular sort of angular velocity of the target with respect to us it's not quite because we haven't really figured out our own rotational velocity and stuff like that but well it's something at least and that can be accounted for in fact let me show you what i have All right so if if, if, I, if you take a look here what we have is well something that looks exactly what we were just talking about except now i'm finding the rate of change of my yaw so that gives me an idea of what my rotational velocity is. And to find the target's angular velocity, all I need to do is find the difference between the two. So now using these, we can then, well, we can, we can find the relative velocity of the target with respect to us and accounting for our own motion. And this opens up a whole avenue of options because you can use this to find target heading, target, um, well, target how, how quickly the target is going to intercept you. It's not perfect because, it, well, it's, it's very much based on estimations. It's, you're only taking two points in time and those two points are very close together. You're not taking averages and stuff, but it's better than nothing at least. So now let's start with an, well, not simple, but an example. So let us say I want a random number to be input for a certain amount of time. And that random ran, uh, random number will sort of define how much I want to strafe by, right? So let's have a random number input, and the question now is how do I hold this ran random number for a given amount of time? Now that's where our output functions come in. <coughs> so if I input it, if I just set it to, if I, if I just set the output to be the random number, the problem we have, as you can see, is that it fluctuates. It, it updates at every frame. That's not what we want. We want to hold a given number for a set amount of time. So now that we've defined our problem, the question is, how do we solve it? And that's, well, that's the core of programming, right? So what I will say is, I think what I want to do now, it's quite similar to what I had for my flip code. So I want to hold a command, yes? So let's, let's start with that. So let's say, if output 2 is less than 0, I want to hold it for 5 seconds, so let's write 5, and we want it to count down, so let's put in an output 2 minus b, and we want this to go into the second output, so if I can just find the printer, oh, actually let me just put in the delta timer first, alright, and there we go, alright, and now the printer, and there. So now let's actually put something into the output one, and we see now this should reset when it hits zero. So we'll just give it a bit of time. In hindsight, I might it might have been a better idea to choose something other than five, but you know. There we go. So now let's replace what's in the first output. So I want it to reset when 
the timer is hit, so I'll say output 2. If output 2 is equal to 0, I'll take in whatever's coming in from a random number generator, which is A. Otherwise, I want it to maintain what it was previously outputting, so I'll put output 1. Now, let's see if this works. So, it's counting down, and it should reset when it hits 0. And... Nope. Well, that's embarrassing. Let's see. So, I think if we set it to be, instead of equal to zero, let's set it to be less than zero. And we want we need to set the second output, the output two, to actually go be below zero as well. So, otherwise, you know, it won't, it won't reach it. So let's just say 0 0.1 and now, still no. Well, <laughs> ah, it's because I missed out. Uh, I missed out a minus sign. So there we go. And yep, there we go. So it resets, and that's exactly what we want. So I hope this gives a better idea of how you use the output functions and what you can do with them. And that's all for now. I'll see you next time.